Hello, Korea watchers. I've been getting inquiries uh, from you that whether the story of Kekwan Hope is complete, and I have nothing new to uh, say about in these episodes. No, there is actually something interesting, really very interesting to tell you in, in this uh, Korea Tamil connection. And that comes from scholars of Japan. Interestingly, why scholars of Japan? So there is a reason. The old Chinese, when it reached Japan, okay, it's retained as such. Whereas in China, the language has been modified, and especially after the Cultural Revolution, uh, the Chinese has been extremely simplified. And so, if you show these characters, the Chinese characters of the ancient uh, uh, chronicles, people cannot really understand it because they use only a simplified Mandarin. Okay. But the second point here in Korea, yes, Koreans do understand Chinese because till their independence, they were using Chinese. Um, as the medium of instruction. But after independence, they uh, promoted Hangul as the language of uh, Korea. And so now there are only very few scholars who can actually uh, read Chinese. Okay. As well, also, the Chinese characters have been actually uh, read uh, by different parts of China slightly differently. So there is no uniform pronunciation for the ancient Chinese characters, we need to keep in mind. So, with the help of Japanese, now we try to understand the Tamil Korean uh, connections. So, for which I am going to show you uh, a PowerPoint presentation giving more on this connection between Tamil and Korean. Okay, one second. Good. So, the story is about Kekwan Ho. Okay, the lady, the lady who went all the way from uh, Arakan Kulam in, in, in Tamil Nadu to um, Gimhe area in Korea and established uh, the uh, Kaya Confederation. Okay. So, the name Kekwan Ho. Have we understood it correctly, what the Chinese characters mean? And that is the part of the research. But to, before we get into Heikon, we need to understand in Japan, the study on our Japanese connections were dealt by one professor, Susumo Ono. He found connections between Sangam Tamar and the Japanese and uh, he was presenting this in Madurai, uh, um, the World Tamil Conference. And he was telling, I am the only one who is actually, I'm a loner interested in this field. And then at that time, uh, there is this uh, young couple, uh, Professor Shanmugadas and uh, Professor Dr. Manon Manish Shanmugadas. They realized, that why should he be a loner? Let's join him and help him. And so with their actually uh, help, uh, Professor Ono could really come out with some very brilliant uh, findings, especially the connections between uh, Manyosho poetry in, in Japan, which is one of the ancient poetry forms in uh, Japan, and the Sangam literature. And so that was a very, very interesting connection. And they were actually referring uh, to a, a race called Yayo Yi. Okay, these were the ancient people of Japan. The question is, where do they come from? The Yayo Yi people. Okay, so that's where I come in, and uh, another uh, Professor Kambe comes in. I'll come to that soon. And so I met um, Professor Sharmadas and his wife Manandani Sharmadas in a conference in uh, Mayoram in 2011. And that time, um, they were working in Jaffna University, and there were also actually professors at uh, Katsu University uh, in Japan. So, but they were focusing more on the Japanese Tamil connections, and I learned a lot from them during that period. 
But actually, the interesting thing comes in 2011 when I met uh, Professor Sutomu, Sutomu Kambe in, uh, in Chennai um, or in, uh, in Mayora. Like I met him in Chennai also. Uh, so, Sutomo Kambe uh, was interested in naturally between uh, Japanese Zen, okay, that is the dominant uh, Buddhism, uh, Mahayana Buddhism in uh, Japan. In fact, like Japanese were really promoting Zen Buddhism and uh, Zen coins and haikus, you know, they developed the Zen to a different level. So naturally, he was interested in the founder of Zen Buddhism, who is Bodhidharma. Okay, so Bodhidharma comes from Kanjigram, from Pallava Kingdom. Okay, so some of uh, Professor Kambe's work shows very clearly that he comes from Kanji. Okay, this word is very important, Kanji, and he even showed the route, uh, the, the sea route, with which. He traveled from uh, Pallava period, uh, from Pallava Kanjuram to uh, China. Okay, uh, so the Shaolin temple, the Shaolin martial arts, and the Shaolin, uh, it, it all derived from uh, this one person called Bodhidharma. And even now, uh, Sutomo Kambe is interested in uh, Bodhidharma. He wants to actually establish. Um, a monument for uh, Bodhidharma in Kanjura. Okay, um, so in this connection, and I met him in this conference, and so we have been talking about it. And uh, I never realized that I really inspired him. And uh, later, he actually wrote a very interesting article about which we are going to talk uh, the connection between power and Korea. Okay, that really inspired him to write this article, okay, about uh, the Queen uh, Kekwan Wong. Now, recently, uh, Sutomu Kambe has come out with an article called Early Presence of the People of South India in East Asia. Okay, evidence from the literature of China, Korea, and Japan. As I told you, the only people on the world who can read these ancient Chinese and the ancient Korean chronicles are Japanese. Okay, so reading all those ancient texts, he has come to the conclusion there must have been actually people of South Indian origin, you know, settled there somewhere in Korea, Japan, or islands in between. So some of the recent findings, the genomic findings of people from Okinawa actually shows there is connection between South Asia and uh, the Japanese. And the ancient Japanese were called as Yayoi. And this word Yayoi derives from the Oi community or the Oi kings of the ancient Tamiya Okay, So they went all the way to uh, these islands in between Japan, Korea and Taiwan. And then they occupied uh, uh, Kaya. They established this Kaya Federation and then they also moved to Japan and they established the Yayoi civilization in Japan. So, in this article, Sutomu Kambe is interested in three major characters of Chinese. But he also gives a very interesting uh, evidence of uh, uh, or reference of Koinde as an ancient Chinese text. See, for example, we have in uh, Tamil literature um, talking about the Romans, Yavanarai, okay, the, the, the white people, also about the Chinese. And we have a lot of archaeological findings to show that both from the East and the West, people have been coming over to uh, South India for trade. Okay. Um, for example, this poetry from Natsina, it says, where so, this refers to the port city in Tamil Nadu, probably Kurkai, uh, where uh, ships from various countries arrived there. Okay. 
and that the, the king has been waiting for these ships, you know, for trade. So these are all from Sangam literature. But what uh, Professor Kambe shows is that from a text from Vailu published in 429 CE, okay, in the fifth century, uh, fifth century CE, there are records showing the presence of uh, or the reference to Pandyas. Okay. So the Pandya has been written in the Chinese characters as you could see here. Uh, this refers to uh, Pandya and the Pandyan kingdom has also been referred as uh, this, is, this is the Pandya and the Pandyans have been also referred as Pandyu okay. also as Hanyu Wang as you see here. Okay. So Pan Yu, Han Yu Wang, and Pandya refers to uh, Pandya of South India. Okay. But then he picks up three interesting Chinese characters, Pan, which refers to Pandya, Pan, Pandya. And then the second word is called Pan. Pan as such does not refer to Pandyas, but when Pan refers with South, okay, then the Nan Pan, Nan Pan refers to the people of South Indian origin who are Pandyas. Okay, so it's not the North Indian, nothing, no Ayodhya. Okay, so the Pandya itself refers to South India. Okay, so that's why the Chinese characters refer to. The third one is Wa Ar O. Okay, so the, again this Wa Ar O refers to actually people uh, living in the lands of the coast areas of, you know, I was referring to the people in in between islands, between uh, Taiwan and Japan, and then in Korea and in the coastline. So this refers to actually the Yayoi people, and they have been referred in, in Chinese by Wa. So what Professor Kambe has discovered is Keihuan O is referred by the modern uh, Koreans or the readings as it appears in uh, some book user uh, is Ko refers to, uh, to permit, to advocate, something to relate to the royalty and then Huang refers to saffron, the color saffron or red and then Oak refers to the jade. Okay, so based on this Saffron and jade, okay. I gave her the name Sembavara, yeah, red jade, okay. But now, what Kambe interprets these Chinese characters in an absolutely an interesting way. What he says is in those times, the jade may not be as popular as it in China in Sangam period, and so he thinks that. She was referred by those characters simply as Pandya because the word oak, which is referred by the Koreans, or pronounced as oak by the Korean, is pronounced in Pinyin in China as Yu. Okay, so the word Pandya is referred as Panyu by the Chinese. So Han Yu, and you can also refer Te Huan Wo as Han Yu, or Han Yu, okay. So actually the word Han Yu, or Han Yu, refers only to Han Ya. So what is the conclusion? Interesting. So when Sembovaram landed in Korea, she referred to herself as she is a queen from Han Ya Kingdom. With Twin fish, and that's why you see the twin fish in uh, Gimhe area, nowhere else in, in Korea. Okay, so the twin fish is very important. So she referred to twin fish, and the federation she establishes there is called Kail. Kail refers to again the same fish, okay, where the Pandyas are well known for the Kail fish. So Kail, Kaya. Okay, it's nothing to do with Buddhaya in North India. Uh, Buddhism came much later and uh, the Buddhistic influence were talked about much later. But we are talking about actually um, a much earlier period, uh, 47 CE. Okay.
okay in those period the pandyas the uh, the, the fish uh, was very important and in Tamil Nadu, we have Kail Patinam. Kail Patinam refers to swamp areas in the coastlines. It also refers to fish. It also refers to the swamp area. And if you go to Ginhe area now, it is again, it's a swamp area. Okay. So Kail refers to either it is a swamp area or it refers to the fish of Pandyas. And so now, Kehuan Oak refers to Pandyas. Isn't it very, very interesting? So he tells very clearly that there is no connection between Ayodhya and uh, um, Keiko and Go or the uh, Kaya kingdom in, in Korea. There is no connection at all. So that was a historical mistake. Uh, if one focuses more on the sea trade route, then one derives this very easily mm, that a lady from or a young uh, maiden from uh, Pandya that went all the way to uh, Korea and they established the Kaya Federation. Isn't it exciting for you? It is certainly exciting for me. So this is the most recent news about our twin Sambora using Chinese uh, findings. Thank you very much. Goodbye.